Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone and welcome to the 14th lecture of this course, Fracture, Fatigue and Failure of Materials. And in this lecture also, we will go ahead and discuss some more on the concepts of plane stress fracture toughness through J integral. So the following concepts will be covered in this lecture. We will be discussing a little more on the J integral and how it can be determined and particularly most importantly the physical significance of uh, J integral method and uh, the critical value of J that is required for fracture. So, what does that actually mean and we will also look into the ways by which we can determine this uh, critical value of J that leads to plane stress fracture toughness values. So, let us start from where we left in the last class, we have uh, discussed about the way by which J integral can be used to determine the fracture toughness. It actually signifies the energy at the vicinity of the crack. So, the J integral method is used to determine this energy scenario at the vicinity of crack tip. And in the very uh, simple way, for any contour of uh, any shape, we can find out a relation which exists at uh, the different points of the contour. This is what it is going to maintain that uh, J is uh, given by W d y minus T i del u i del x d s. And this is integrated for the entire contour. This equation is valid for any particular point and this is integrated for the entire contour. So, that we can get the energy of this contour as G. Okay. Now, each of this term should be explained in more details and we have already seen that x, y are nothing but the coordinates which are normal to the crack front uh, in along the direction of y, x load should be added and x is the direction for the crack growth and d s is the increment along the contour path. Now, t is very important factor here, t is the stress or the traction vector at a point on the path and so let me also write it down here as T basically signifies the traction vector at a point on path, in this case it is a tau. Okay. U on the other hand is the displacement vector, again this is valid at any particular point. So, u is this displacement vector at any point on the path and this is supposed to change from point to point. On the other hand, if we are talking about the w part here which represents the strain energy density or it is actually in more simple words it is the uh, strain energy per unit volume, but it again varies from point to point. So, this is also a point function that varies from point to point. So, that we can determine this relation at any particular point 
and if we are integrating this for the entire contour, we are supposed to get the energy for the entire path. Okay. So, let us expand this individual terms for uh, the first one, let us say we do this for w and w is uh, representing the change in the stress uh, with the change in the strain. Right. So, w can be expanded in the following way for a 1, 2 coordinate path. Let us say we can do this as 0 to epsilon 1, 1. This should be expanded at sigma 1, 1 d epsilon 1, 1. And then again from 0 to epsilon 1, 2, this should be sigma 1, 2 d epsilon 1, 2 again from 2 1 epsilon 2 1 this should be sigma 2 1 d epsilon 2 1 and finally for 2 2 this should be sigma 2 2 d epsilon 2 2. So, these two are actually equivalent and that makes us the overall w by simply expanding this as 0 to epsilon 1 1 is sigma 1 1 d epsilon 1 1 plus we are simply summing those two term here because epsilon 1 2 and epsilon 2 1 is the same of magnitude and that gives us the final term as it is varying from 0 to epsilon 2 2 which gives us sigma 2 2 d epsilon 2 2. So, that is the overall strain energy density at any particular point. Okay. Uh, so, the second term itself, if we are expanding this, this sh, uh, should be like T 1 del u 1 del x. Okay. Uh, T 2 del u 2 del x d u. Okay. So, that represents including the traction at any point as well as the displacement at any point and uh, how that can be used to determine this factor here. If uh, we also need to expand the T vector here itself. So, T is the traction vector can be also written as T i is related to the sigma value at that point and the coordinate. Okay. So, that makes T 1 equals to sigma 1 1 n 1 plus sigma 1 2 n 2 and T 2 should be sigma 2 1 n 1 plus sigma 2 2 n 2. So, we can expand all these uh, factors, all these parameters and we can have this relation for any particular point over the entire path and we can integrate this to get the overall energy. Now, this is all the mathematical expression for um, the J integral term and this is valid for any kind of uh, energy or any other situation that we want it to correlate with. But when we are talking about the crack situation, we should explain it on the basis of uh, the presence of a crack and the region in the front of the crack. So, let us see how it looks like. So, this is what is a crack tip and this is the contour in front of uh, the crack, ahead of the crack. So, this is the, the y and the x directions. Okay. So, for each of the segments, so there are a few segments uh, in this contour or there are actually two contours that we can see. Uh, it is starting from the point A here. So, this is represented by contour tau 1 and then it is coming to the point C which is the free surface of uh, the edge of the crack and it is moving along C D. So, this is one segment and uh, then it is moving along the contour tau 2 
and finally f and a and coming back to the starting point. So, that makes it four different contours all by itself. So, the overall j is uh, related to the contour of tau 1 plus it is then moving from C to D. So, like this and then the contour of tau 2 and finally, J for the contour F and A. Okay. So, we need to fit this relation for all the different segments. Okay. So, for each of this, we should okay, let me write it here. Uh, the relation as J is given for any kind of contour. So, let us say this could be tau 1 or tau 2 or a sorry c d or f a for any of this the same relation should be valid which is given by w d y minus t i del u i del x d x. Okay. Now, for contour tau 1 and tau 2, we have seen that how in individual of uh, this can be expanded and we can find out the overall relation on the overall values. For the case of uh, C D and F A, these are the two segments which are standing on the, uh, the free surface of the crack wake. right? So, there it gets very interesting and we can once again expand this as the following. So, J of C D or even J of let me write it J of F A, this should be given by this relation once again. So, W D Y minus T I del U I del X D X. Now, for the case of the C D or F A for that matter actually there is no growth along the y direction. So, D y essentially is 0 right the, the, the crack is growing along this one if, when it does, but D y at any case will be always 0. So, that makes the first part anyway the product of W and this D y whatever finite value of W is having it is still getting a value of 0. On the other hand, if we are talking about the second term, here also we are seeing this t, this traction vector acting perpendicular to this point. Now, this is also 0 for a free surface and uh, the C D or F A are the free surfaces of the crack. So, that makes it also 0. And again, the product for whatever displacement it might be having, it still gives a product of 0. And the overall, we are getting that J of C D or J of F A are equivalent to 0. Okay. So, these are the individual thing we have made. So, this gets equivalent to 0 and uh, this also gets equivalent to 0, but overall the, the entire energy is still given by this 4 segment and most interestingly there is another fact that we have to consider that the j integral for any closed contour always comes to 0. So, the summation of this is anyway going to come as 0. So, which makes j as a total uh, the integral for this entire path is j of tau 1 plus j of C d plus j of tau 2 plus j of F a as explained here. This total summation comes to 0 and then out of this we have also seen that how j of C d gets to 0 and j of F a gets to 0. So, that makes actually j of tau 1 plus j of tau 2 
equals to 0 or in other word we can say that j of tau 1 equals to minus j of tau 2 which means that even if we are considering it in this direction or that one that is independent of the path and the magnitude of this tau 1 and tau 2 for the j integral part is the same. Okay? The magnitude of this free surface are anyway coming to 0 and the magnitude for the contours whichever path are we following are the same. So, which makes it a path independent term. So, j integral is a path independent it does not matter which path we are considering and at the vicinity of the crack tip near to the crack tip that this is the energy scenario that we can uh, find out based on this relation. Okay. Now, this still comes as a, a bit of mathematics here and uh, so that we can use this relation to find out the number. But what does it actually mean physically? What is the physical significance of j integral? To understand that we again have to uh, go back to what we have understood when we talked about the g term, the strain energy release rate. So, j integral is also a very similar concept and it represents the, uh, the of course, the energy which is available at the crack tip per unit crack extension. So, as the crack is extending per unit time, uh, how much energy is available at the crack tip and which acts as the driving force for the crack to grow. So, it is considered as the pseudo potential energy difference between two identically loaded bodies with slightly different crack length. Okay. So, if one body is having a crack length of A, let us say we are talking about a component A, capital A which is having crack length A and a component B which is having a crack length of A plus del A, whatever is the difference in the pseudo potential energy between these two component that is given by J or in other word if the same component if the crack grows from A to A plus delta A how much energy will be released the strain energy that is being released that is considered as J. So, this definition wise also it sounds very familiar to what we have seen for the case of G right. So, this is shown here initially there is a crack length of A and then it is growing by a infinitesimally small amount d a. Of course, this is schematically shown and not on scale, but if such is the case then how much of the energy that is being released that is termed as j and there can be two ways to obtain that. Either we can consider that the volume is constant. So, here both of these curves here signifies the load versus displacement curve okay. and uh, in one case. So, this is the load and this V signifies the displacement. So, typical load versus displacement curve that we get if we are uh, applying a tensile stresses on any kind of component. right? The symbol of this displacement sometimes are also used as delta or E or L. So, just to be familiar with that all of these symbols actually represent a displacement. Now, what is important here to notice is that either when the, the crack is growing, if we are talking about a situation when the displacement is con constant, it is being controlled, it is a constant value, then there is a drop in the load that we are seeing. Okay. So, this could be one of the case and the energy change uh, uh, is represented by this hatched space here. So, initially it has a crack length of A and this is what the graph looks like and again this being a elastic plastic material ap apart from the elastic part there is also some amount of plastic deformation here that is noticeable. On the other hand once the crack grows to A plus delta A there is a drop in the load and this is the load displacement curve for the second part when we have a plus de, uh, delta a crack length and once again here also we are seeing the elastic and the plastic part very prominently. The energy that is being released is given by this hatched area here and this is equivalent to j times the total area. So, this capital A here signifies the change in the 
area. Okay? And on the other hand, there could be the other scenario when we have P equals to constant. So, that means that we are applying a constant load. In that case, since the load will be constant, there will be an enhancement in the V term because of uh, the second case when we have A plus delta A crack length. So, the first case is when we have crack length of A, second case is when we have crack length of A plus delta A. In one case, we require a uh, volume of V0 and in the second and the load of P0. On the other hand, if we are controlling the load, the load is supposed to be P0 here also, but the volume is increasing by a term let us say V0 plus del V. Okay. On the other hand, in this case, the load is being released to let us say P0 minus delta P. Okay. And we can determine this area and the difference in the area for uh, this condition of A and A plus del A delta A that can be determined and that is physically that is what is uh, signifies the uh, change in the energy that is being released as the crack is growing. So, that signifies the J integral. Okay. Apart from the mathematical term, this is the physically what is happening. And uh, since we have talked about this graph and we have talked about the definition, uh, just for a while we should look back to where we have first learnt about this and where we have first discussed about the concept of G. So, G is again nothing but the strain energy release rate which signifies the energy or the elastic energy or the potential energy, the stored energy that is being released per unit growth of the crack. or potential or elastic energy that is being released as the crack grows. Okay. So, this is the uh, one that we have uh, determined for the case of elastic condition. So, in this case you can see that the loading and the unloading car follows the same path. So, that is what is a brittle failure or that is what is an elastic condition where the stress and the strain or the load and the displacement they are related by some particular constant relation and at any particular displacement in this case we can figure out the corresponding stress. It does not change if we are talking about the loading path or the unloading path. So, this is just to draw the analogy between J and the G. So, this is for the elastic part we are seeing that as uh, we are looking for the situation when we have a crack of length A for condition 1 and for condition 2 in this case we have A plus del A or A plus delta A whichever way we can uh, see that there is a drop in the load by delta P del P and there is an enhancement in the elongation by del E similar to what we have seen in the last slide and we can determine how much is the uh, the value of this G. Okay. Now, coming to that we then again it uh, kinds of reminds us to the fact that that means that up to for the elastic part at least this J and G can be correlated. So, this is essentially the same thing that we are talking about at least up to the elastic part. Up to the plastic part something else is happening and that we can explain. So, for the elastic part actually J is nothing but the same thing the change in the potential energy per unit or uh, per crack length. So, that is given by uh, J and for elastic condition this is exactly the same that we have seen for the case of G. So, essentially J for the elastic part is same as that of G and G we have also seen that how G and K are related as per the Arvind's modification. We have seen that K equals to root over E G which gives us G equals to k square by E typically for the plane strain, but since we are talking about the plane stress condition here, we are using this term E prime and that includes actually the 1 minus nu square 
term value is the Poisson's ratio. So, E prime is given by E by this factors here 1 minus mu square. Again for some cases uh, we also use the symbol of mu for the case of Poisson's ratio. So, this is just uh, for the sake of understanding that which symbols are being used, but essentially it means that E is being uh, changed by this factor here 1 minus uh, mu, mu square. For the case of metallic materials, this mu value is around 0 0.33 for metallic system or 0 0.3 and for any other system usually the, the Poisson's ratio is uh, has to be known or we can find that out from the standard references. So, that is what we are seeing for the uh, elastic part. On the other hand, when we are talking about the plastic part, we still need to consider the area under the curve and for that case, uh, let us say in case when a specimen is being subjected to pure bending something like this, we can obtain the uh, plastic part also and the area under the plastic curve is determined as A. Uh, which is the area under the plastic part of the load displacement curve and typically the j value for the plastic part is given by a relation eta a by b and small b. Now, capital B here is the specimen thickness and we can find out the specimen thickness right before the test, we can measure that out and small b here is the, the broken ligament part which is the area in front of the crack tip. So, that signifies the length of W which is the width of the specimen and A which is the crack length of the specimen. So, W is the width of specimen and A is the crack length. So, whatever the specimen is, whether it is a compact tension specimen or a bent specimen, whatever the area ahead of the crack tip or the length ahead of the crack tip is what is important. So, you see this is the total width of the component and this is the A crack length. So, in that case, this part here which is dictated by the total width minus the crack length W minus A. So, that is termed as the broken ligament length. So, this is B equals to W minus A that is equivalent to the broken ligament length because this is the section, this is the area, this is the region where the plastic deformation is happening. This part is not of much significance when we were talking about the plane strain condition, but for the plane stress condition, this is where the plastic deformation is happening and we want to figure out that uh, whatever mechanism is happening and whatever this length which is of interest. So, that makes it place on this relation for J plastic which is given by eta A by B B. Okay. So, we will discuss some more about this J integral and how this can be determined in practice in the next lecture. So, Concluding this lecture comes the J integral method for measuring fracture toughness is applicable for linear as well as non-linear elastic material that means which undergoes elastic plastic behavior at the crack tip and uh, for that kind of material J that kind of behavior J integral is the ideal one. It essentially signifies the pseudo potential energy difference achieved with the growth of the crack by unit length. So, as the crack grows, whatever is the change in the strain energy or the potential energy that is what is termed as the uh, J. And J 1 C is equivalent to the critical energy that is required at the point of fracture that is considered as the critical value of J integral and 1 again stands for the mode 1 here. So, that signifies the J 1 C for the plane stress fracture toughness. And it has, we have seen that it has uh, both the elastic and the plastic component. 
the elastic component is similar or equivalent to the G 1 C that we have uh, seen earlier and the plastic part is uh, related to the area under the load displacement curve along with the, the thickness inversely proportional to the thickness as well as the broken ligament length. So, following are some of the references that has been used for this lecture and thank you very much.